Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural Santa Barbara Basketball Court of Champions. Thank you for coming tonight and what a distinguished uh, guest list we have. A little bit about the Santa Barbara Court of Champions. It has been established to recognize and honor individuals from our Santa Barbara community who have achieved and or made significant contributions to the game of basketball. There is an unlimited variety of contributors, coaches, players, administrators, community mentors, entertainers, medical personnel, financial supporters, team management, team organizational owners, media journalists, I could probably stop right there, uh, and public speakers who have foundationally served as the grassroots for Santa Barbara over many, many decades. In concert with recognizing and honoring outstanding dignitaries, both past and present, uh, the Court of Champions also places a high standard of responsibility on assisting our youth basketball participants with this great game as they develop and rise through the ranks of elementary, junior, senior high school, collegiate basketball, and the good Lord willing, the National Basketball Association. This support is provided with the infrastructure of basketball clinics, camps, motivational workshops, and college scholarship funds. The Santa Barbara Basketball Court of Champions is a community endeavor, a family for all people and all ages. Should be, ladies and gentlemen, what a distinct pleasure and honor it is for the city of Santa Barbara to welcome Jerry West. First of all, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, obviously, there's four people here I know really well. I don't want to have a chance to say a few words about them. It'll be a long evening, and so we're going to try to keep it brief as possible. But, uh, two people I particularly want to recognize, Don Ford, who had an opportunity to coach in Los Angeles and uh, and had a terrific career for us, did all the things that really helped us win. And also, one of my all-time favorite players, uh, Jamal Will. So. guys from uh, Santa Barbara that played for the Lakers, I'll say that. Uh, there's only been one from Cabin Creek, West Virginia. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, one other person I'd like to acknowledge here is Brian Shaw. Where are you, Brian? Uh, I don't see <laughs> uh, so somebody asked me a question uh, a, couple, a couple of minutes, uh, well, 30 minutes ago. Asked me about Brian when he was here at college. And I had a chance to see Brian play a lot, and uh, the Boston Celtics drafted him right before we did. And this guy, uh, this gentleman asked me if we were going to draft him. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Brian, uh, uh, you were going to be a Laker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got there eventually, anyway. But, um, you know, tonight, this night is not about me at all. It's about all the people in Santa Barbara who make uh, a name for themselves in the world of sports, a lot of different sports. But uh, two people in particular here um, that I really want to mention, uh, people I've known, both uh, Bill Burka and Gary Colson. Uh, they came to the West and, and uh, covered wagons, they're so damn old. <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm right here with them. Um, but I'll tell you, um, Bill Burka, let's start with him first. Um, my God, what a great person he is. Uh, I've known him and loved him for years, but I usually don't use that word very much. But uh, one of the most unique men I've ever met in my life, the most loyal, trustworthy person in the world. Uh, had a chance to be around him as much as I did. Through a lot of great times, uh, but some really miserable times when you lose. You understand what kind of person he is. And uh, Bert, uh, my God, I really don't want to say enough to just thank for being a great friend. More importantly, uh, someone that I've had a chance to spend a lot of intimate time with and uh, I just admire tremendously. He doesn't get enough credit for the work he did with the Lakers. And uh, everyone that asked me about you, I said you was your best. There's the next gentleman on my right over here, uh, Mr. Colson. Uh, I've known him a long time, okay? And Years ago, when he played the All-Star game, uh, this was one of the worst things that I've ever heard in my life. But I was always in to give away gifts that I received in the All-Star game, and I got a ring, okay? Everyone got a ring. 
And people today would love to have this ring, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, Gary, it's in the harbor of uh, Marina Del Rey, is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> but I gave him this ring to wear, and he lost it in the damn harbor. <laughs> Gary, that probably cost you a few uh, number of thousands of dollars. So thanks again for uh, having wooden hands. <laughs> um, but this guy's one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. He's really a public servant, loves to do things for people, and uh, it's hard as big as this room. Uh, boy, have we shared a lot together. But more importantly, our friendship was the greatest thing that uh, we did share. Uh, Gary, thanks for being a big part of my life. Um, uh, you're just the best. And for me to have been associated with these people for so many years in my life, um, pretty amazing, really. And to still feel the same way that I have for all these years about them is even more remarkable. But thank you uh, very much for having me here. Don Volpe uh, was just a legend. Dos Pueblos High School basketball coach and teacher of 25 years. He was named All Europe and All Pacific Coast as a player in the Air Force. Team uh, captain and most valuable player for the UCSB Gauchos in 1960, and that team was 18 and 7 and tied for the California Collegiate Athletic Association Championship. He also lettered one year at BYU, coached the UCSB freshman team the next year, hired in 1966 to start the Dos Pueblos basketball program and coached at Dos Pueblos High School for 10 years. In the 1970-71 season, Coach Volpe reached the pinnacle of his career, a CIF AAA division championship, and that team finished the year 27 and two. Here, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Don Volpe. Next uh, inductee, uh, Phil Patton, and when you talk about uh, the Patton name in Santa Barbara, you're talking about uh, legendary media names, and, and Phil was the very first. Uh, Phil joined, actually, the U.S. Navy upon his graduation from Cal, uh, uh, Cathedral Latin High School in 1944. He served in both the Atlantic and Pacific campaigns as an electrician's mate aboard the USS Zellers, a destroyer that was heavily damaged during a, a kamikaze attack at Okinawa, which took the lives of 42 of his shipmates. Well, Phil came to Santa Barbara and the Santa Barbara News Press in August of 1954 as a co-sports editor. He was soon elevated to sports editor and wrote his Patton's Press Box column for 16 years, covered UCSB athletics from 1954 until 1970, and was the original voice of the UCSB Gauchos radio play-by-play -play for both football and basketball from 1959 to 1970. And Mark uh, Patton, a great friend of mine, was telling me his father broadcast the first game ever at Rob Jim over at UCSB, the first basketball game in 1959, and who did they play? They played the defending national champion, California Golden Bears. So how's that for an opener? To, ladies and gentlemen, the great Phil Patton and his son, my dear friend Mark Patton, down here. I think it's probably the greatest testament to a person that his son would want to be just like him. And uh, I, my father passed away when I was 17, he was only 45, and uh, he had seven kids. And, um, and uh, I think every one of us <clears throat> who is still alive uh, still remember our father to this day with such reverence and oh, so much to him. And, it's amazing to me that he's still remembered like this. He passed away in 1971. And uh, so I really appreciate it, all of you who uh, remember my father this way. He was a great man, a good father, a great father. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for, for recognizing my father this way. Um, uh, it, it truly means a lot to me and my family. Thank you. Thank you. Our next inductee, uh, boy, I'll tell you, you talk about a local legend, longtime girls basketball coach at Santa Barbara High School, Mr. Andrew Butcher. Thank you. I just have a couple of words. It's amazing that you're throwing a ball through a round hoop to drive everybody to this um, night. And we all have that in common, and um, great things have come of it. So thank you for the award, and I just appreciate it. Thank you. 
the very best, one of the greatest to ever play for another inductee tonight, uh, Mark French, the great coach at UCSB, Aaron Alexander Brown. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the selection <coughs> committee for selecting me. I uh, look at this group of people that are up here tonight, and I wonder if I can make the right in. Um, but there is one thing that we all have in common, is that we love the sport of basketball, whether we played it or coached it. And not just because it's a fun sport to play or to coach, but because of what it brought to our lives in terms of the lessons we've learned. Um, you know, basketball for me was practice for real life. You had to learn how to achieve a common goal with people maybe you didn't get along with or people that um, you didn't necessarily see eye to eye with and, or, you know, in really difficult circumstances. And, um, that's why I saw basketball in my life. I, I believe the success that I have in my life is due to the time that I've spent at UCSD. And luckily, my coach, um, I get to sit next to tonight, and I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank him for the role that he had in my life. Jerry Pym, 395 career victories. Um, some of my failures, uh, Jamal Wilkes was a failure. He didn't come to Utah. <laughs> Um, Don Ford was also a failure. He didn't come. Uh, Bartholomew didn't come. Even didn't even want to come visit. Uh, all a lot of these guys really griped me uh, when they were high school seniors. But and the thing that I'm most proud of about UCSB is, yes, we we won some games. We got to the NCAA tournament. But the town was ready for some success, and they were really willing to go out on a limb and give us the, the money necessary to recruit and to do the things we did. And it's a great basketball town. Uh, so Bill, uh, Kurt and Eric, and what you've done is uh, really a great thing for this, this city. And uh, I hope it grows and becomes uh, better and better and bigger and bigger as the years go. And thanks for uh, what you've done with me tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kurt. He's a class man. He's the coach of the Denver Nuggets. He's made a lot of people in Santa Barbara root, not only for the Lakers, but for the Denver Nuggets. Mr. Brian Shaw. Um, I've always been a person that kind of laid back in the cut and just kind of observed everything that, that went on. And uh, most of these people up here don't realize what they really meant to me. Um, I was sharing with Don Ford when, when Ben Howland called me on the phone to come up to come here on a recruiting trip I didn't know very much about UCSB and um, I, one of the questions I asked him I said well who in the who that played at UCSB ever made it to the NBA and he told me Don Ford and uh, so I kind of perked up a little bit and I was like oh okay okay and um, that phone call with Ben uh, my recruiting trip here um, and then obviously my parents feeling comfortable with Coach Pym and Ben, you know, turning me over to them, uh, you know, for their guidance uh, during my time here at Santa Barbara was, uh, was everything. And the fact that over all of these years, we have uh, stayed connected and in contact, um, you know, means the world to me, especially with my family not being here anymore. Um, the growing up in Oakland, with uh, when Jamal Wilkes, who was Keith Wilkes then, uh, in 1975, being a you know when the Warriors won the championship, you know I was a big Warrior fan, and just the connection. Once I found out that he was from Santa Barbara, um, as well, and who couldn't get fired up uh, when I was playing in the games and knowing that Jerry West was in the crowd um, watching us play, um, to want to put on a good show for him, um, you know, and and possibly you know, maybe catch his eye and, and become part of the Lakers. Um, even, you know, Coach French um, and watching him, how he uh, turned that program around, you know, they weren't very good when, when we were in, when I first got to Santa Barbara. Um, and I remember shortly after I left, you know, seeing them making the, the NC2A tournament year after year again. Uh, Coach Colson, Coach Cunningham, and all these guys who, who played the game, coached the game, and now I look at myself and, you know, I'm a coach, uh, I played, now I'm a coach, and just kind of following in their footsteps, and once again, sitting, in, sitting back in the cut, um, just picking their brains and, and, and taking little things from them that made me, that are, that are making me what I am today. So I thank you all so much for uh, everything that you've provided for me, even though you guys don't really 
realize that, that what you've done for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Vic Bartolome. place in the world to play Santa Barbara, California. Mm -hmm. uh, the best uh, mentors anybody could have. Coach Carrero and Santa Barbara High School. Sarah Downs. Mm -hmm. I see Roberto Wilson here. Um, he had an excellent career at Oregon State University. I was pulling for you all the way. Um, yes, I, going from uh, a long, lanky baseball player that couldn't hit anything <laughs> six foot six foot nine i think it was time to change careers and fortunately one of those life's uh, things that come along dr Garrow was what saved me in my career by switching from baseball to basketball and uh, the rest was what we say history it's not a, yeah. an excellent career and thank you very much for being part of this wonderful group Thank you very much. Sal, to this day, still holds the record for fouling out of the most games. Sal, I didn't write that. That's <laughs> Might be why you scored so many points, Sal. But Sal was inducted in the San Marcos Hall of Fame in 1966, and he has done so much more. The list goes on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sal Rodriguez. I want to thank the committee who put this together. I thought it was a great idea. Uh, Kurt Pickering and Burkhardt and, and uh, Barry Paul. All you guys, it's, it's a great um, tribute to all the people up here. And I, I uh, commend you guys for uh, uh, doing this. And I think it's going to get bigger and better. It's a great job. Thank you guys. Okay. Uh, a really quick story. I had uh, my, my coach, Maury Halleck, uh, 1959 to 62, and he led us to the Sea of Finals in 61, and we lost. Sorry about that, Maury. Uh, also, one more uh, coach, Howland. I uh, played in the Tomahawk League. He took 46 shots in one game. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you guys. It's a great evening, and uh, I'm honored to be up here. I don't know where I fit in, uh, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you. Well, our next inductee is Mr. Jack Trigero. Jack was 240 and 90 in 14 seasons as Santa Barbara High School's head coach. His teams won five Channel League titles and three of his players went to the NBA. And there's a couple sitting to my left over here right now. Uh, his teams were known for their discipline, their uh, well-precision controlling of the offense, aggressive defense, very sound fundamentals, and being very, very unselfish. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to congratulate all the inductees. Uh, thank you very much. Our next inductee, Westmont women's basketball coach, Kirsten Moore. Kirsten was the head coach and has been the head coach at Westmont, and boy, did she bring the team to the top. Uh, she. Uh, she brought the team to the national championship. How much higher do you get than that? The NAIA national championship, and that came in the 2012-2013 uh, campaign when the Warriors were 30 and four. Well, uh, it is a real honor to be here with the amazing people that are up here um, tonight and all the things that they have accomplished. And I really feel like I and the beneficiary of the people in this community that went before me and really established a community that would embrace basketball and care about athletics and what it can bring um, to young people's lives as we try and impact the young people that I have the opportunity to work with as a coach. Um, specifically, Coach French and just bringing women's basketball to the forefront of this community um, and that I got to come into a community right from the beginning that was going to embrace um, what females can do as athletes and and uh, and I, I mean I'm still pretty young in my career and I know that I'm up here really for one reason and one reason only and that's that we won a national championship um, which I know is something I may not ever have a chance to do again I hope that we, we can accomplish that but uh, so many things have to come into uh, into alignment to make that happen um, and I think 
what I want to share is that I recognize I'm up here for that, but what I want to share with all of you as this community is that I realized that um, that national championship was not something that I earned. That national championship was something that we did. Uh, when my husband passed away, um, right before we headed into that season, uh, this community came around me unlike anything I ever could have imagined. Uh, supported me, supported my team as we fought and competed to try to be our best and to make the run that we did um, and to have the story that we did, we wouldn't have done it without the love and support of so many of you that came alongside of us uh, and really empowered us to, to believe in ourselves and to do that. And so I want to say thank you to you and, uh, you know, as we're also up here um, uh, having the opportunity to thank people that helped us get here, I want to thank uh, my incredible family and friends, uh, and also I'm extremely thankful for a personal faith um, that, uh, that allowed me to stand on God's promises that he can work all things, even the really hard things, uh, for the good of those who love him. So, thank you. Coach French holds UCSB records for most coaching victories by a women's basketball coach with 438, and for highest winning percentage, of 69%. He guided the Gauchos to 15 postseason appearances, including 13 in a row at one point, and 12 NCAA tournament appearances, including nine straight. He coached the Gauchos to the big uh, to uh, 12 Big West tournament championships and 13 regular season uh, uh, championships, and named the Big West Coach of the Year a record seven times. His players were named Big West Player of the Year nine times, and he produced five All-Americans and 25 first-team All-Big West selections. He coached six student-athletes who went on to play in the WNBA. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark French. One of the things that I value so much about Santa Barbara is that the, the sporting community uh, always rallies around uh, each other. And what a wonderful place for me to bring up my family and for me to have the opportunity to coach and uh, mentor wonderful young women like uh, Aaron and so many of the other gauchos. Um, the Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable and now the Court of Honor are indicative of how much we care about our home here in this community. And it's been a privilege and an honor for me to spend all these years here. And uh, again, thank you to the committee. Ladies and gentlemen, Holly Emerson Ford. No regrets. I had a saying in high school and college that I wanted to live with no regrets and play with no regret. I wanted to uphold the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I wanted to live in a way that's honoring and pleasing to God. I also very much wanted to play every second of every practice and every second of every game like it was my last. Go after the ball, play hard, be, and not and try to be a beat. Talk to teammates, run the plays like Coach wanted. Andrew there was my coach. I have the honor of saying that. And gosh darn it, I wanted to win. You might wonder how two kids from one family, because my brother is inducted in the student, you know, on, can make it into a prestigious court of honor like this. It started with Rick Ford, an only child, and Barbara Birch, who had one sister. They were high school sweethearts at Santa High School. They both wanted a big family, because they didn't have a big family. They had five kids, of which I'm the baby. These are my parents. They encouraged us to play hard and fair, and even if they didn't know if they had the money for new school clothes in the fall every year, they showered us with love and played outside with us and told us they expected a lot of us and modeled honesty and hard work. They were both athletic, and as my dad used to say, Mom Our next inductee, ladies and gentlemen, also happy birthday, Maury Halleck. Maury, 84 years old. Wow. Maury grew up in the state of Washington, went to Western Washington University, graduated there in 1995. He married his lovely wife, Mary Lorraine, and they have four children, Bradley, Kevin, Maureen, and Brian, and 12 grandchildren. Maury moved to Santa Barbara in the summer of 1956. He coached Santa Barbara High football and basketball from 56 to 58, 
started coaching football and basketball at San Marcos High School when the school opened in 1958. He served as the head basketball coach from 1958 to 1981. Wow, what a great run, Maury. Retired from San Marcos High in 1989. Maury also served during his tenure at San Marcos as athletic director, football coach, and as mentioned, basketball coach, but also tennis coach and softball coach. And in 1980-81, San Marcos running Royals lost in uh, the CIF 4A championship game to finish 26-1. and that season. Ladies and gentlemen, happy birthday to Maury Halleck and congratulations to you. You know, I'm, I'm so proud, so proud to be here and see all these people, see all these people up at this table that are great people. And I'm so proud of my wife of 59 years. I'm proud of my four kids. I love them very much. And the most thing that I get out of this is that I'm proud to see my friends and I'm proud that you're our basketball fan. Thank you very much for having me here. I really enjoy it. Thank you. Our next inductee is Mr. John Moore. The Westmont men's basketball coach for the last 512 years, I think, right, John? <laughs> well, I want to start by uh, thanking Andrew Butcher for giving me his two minutes. <laughs> you know, this will be five minutes on, so be minutes on. Sorry, Kevin. And uh, thank you to the uh, Kurt Pickering, what a visionary, and the rest of the committee. I think uh, you did a very fine job. I think there's probably naysayers as to who you uh, brought in, but uh, it's a tough job, and I think you did a super job, aside from one glaring choice, and that was yours, truly. <laughs> I wrote some things down, like Holly did, uh, just because I think it goes better when I don't try to do it uh, at the... It was 1964. As a family, we were living in Tokyo, and the, Olympic, the Olympics came to town. I was a young boy and vividly remember the U.S. Olympic basketball team coming to our home for dinner. The team was coached by the great Hank Ivan and had such stars as Gail Goodrich, Walt Hazard, Bill Bradley, Larry Brown, and Lucius Jackson. It's where my fascination for the game of basketball began. My mom, who is here, is from Muncie, Indiana, and suffers from Hoosier hysteria, <laughs> would disagree. She would say, my love for basketball came long before that. I was born into basketball madness. Who knows? But what I do know is this game of basketball is the greatest game ever invented. When I came to West Pond as a student athlete, I had no idea the gem that I stumbled upon. When I graduated, I couldn't wait to return. Quite a few years later, I was able to find my way back to what was and continues to be my dream job. So thanks to basketball, and thanks to Westmont. And then I have my highest thank you to pass on to my wife and two daughters. It's not easy to be a coach's wife. I'm sure there have been times Rachel, my wife who's here, has felt like a single mom. But she's been the perfect wife for me because you, or she, have loved me through it all. So what you have here is a great game, best ever. Next, a family and a community, both at Westmont and the Santa Barbara community, who have offered me tremendous love and support. And lastly, faith. I, I am convinced I am who I am today because of the love God has shown me and the faith in Him I have secured. It's an incredible privilege, as I said earlier. I, uh, I don't know why I'm up here, but uh, as Sal said a moment ago, I'll take it. So thanks so much. Marked by so many incredible achievements at UCLA, at Fresno State, at Wyoming, and at UCSB. Mr. Gary Cunningham. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate all that stuff. Uh, I want to uh, thank the committee and thank Kirk Pickering for honoring me tonight. I feel humbled with this wonderful group of superstars up here. 
basketball's meant a lot to us. And I want to congratulate everybody on the dots. Uh, if the game of basketball didn't exist, we wouldn't be here. And Dr. James Naismith, many, many years ago, they, he was trying to figure out something to do between football and baseball season in cold weather. And he invited the game of basketball with a peach basket and the original 13 rules. The game has changed a lot since then. We have shot clock. We have glass backboards. Uh, we have a number of things that has changed. Uh, but we all love the game. Players have gotten bigger, stronger, but the game is still the game. It's a great game, and all of these people, some of these people sitting up here are superstars, play, coach, uh, achieve. But what amazes me is the size of our community. We are not a big community. I mean, if you went from, say, Carpinteria to Goleta, there's probably 140,000 people. And you look at the list of athletes that we have put out from our community, it's incredible. Basketball, football, tennis, and so on. Uh, just a number of them, and it's a tribute to the coaches in this community, you folks in the room who are committed to youth, and it's been a great ride. And so I'm honored to be here, I'm honored to receive this award, and I'm most appreciative, and I'm not going to talk too long. <laughs> Thank you. Our next inductee to the Santa Barbara Court of Champions is Mr. Ben Howland. First, uh, after listening to Holly speak today, <laughs> after listening to her attitude and everything she stands for, Don had stands for this half of it. You <laughs> 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 might have really been a special player. <laughs> so it's really unfortunate that that wasn't, uh, you know, switched between the two. Uh, Sal got around, I took 48 shots in one day. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that fact that I understood my role. <laughs> but, but I really am excited about tonight. I, I really want to thank Kurt and I want to thank Eric and the rest of the committee for putting together an event which really honors basketball in the Santa Barbara community. And you can see by all the people up here on the dais how rich a tradition and, and how a, a great history of basketball as coaches, as players, etc., has come from this community. And I am so proud to be a kid that grew up here and grew up a part of this community and learning uh, from so many coaches and looking up to so many players. As I remember uh, I graduated in 1975 from high school, so Jamal and Don were uh, local players here ahead of me by a few years and really looked up to them, unbelievable teams. I grew up watching the 71 teams at Don to the CI Championship, Richard Stein, Bruce Cole, etc. So that was always fun for me. Uh, I want to thank Sal. I grew up in the boys club and that's where I really learned to love the game of basketball. And he was my first coach. Uh, Larry Branish was my coach and allowed me 48 shots, so I have to mention his name. Uh, and I, I want to thank Ed DeLacy. I played for Ed DeLacy here at San Bernardino City College. He, he did a wonderful job at City College here and really appreciate everything he taught me. Uh, about the game, uh, and, and it's really an honor for me, especially tonight, to be going in uh, with my former boss, who gave me my first big break, Jerry Pim. I worked for Coach for 11 years and learned so much about the game and about the business of college basketball. I've always been indebted to him for giving my first big opportunity, and we were both very fortunate to coach a number of great players when I worked for him. Notably, probably two of the best ever from UCSB right here, Brian Shaw and Carrick to Hart. And uh, it was just a joy to coach these two guys right here to be a part of that staff. Uh, you know, I remember uh, UCSB, the game that really, really, I thought, set us on a great path of success was the win over NC State. I'll never forget that game. And I remember Jerry West came up to scout that game and was here watching Brian, who uh, Brian and Carrick and Eric and the rest of our group. But uh, you know, have 22 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists in the game. That was a triple double before that was really a well-known stat, and that was unbelievably special. And then the one thing I'll always remember about Carrick 
was uh, the game in his senior year in 1990 when we beat UNLV the year they won it. And he, he had sprained his ankle badly, I mean bad, the day before we were going to play the game. I, had, I thought no shot to be able to play. He and our trainer, Harry Callahan, did an unbelievable job in rehabbing his uh, foot to get him to be able to play. He ended up getting 26 points, one of the great games in the history of the Thunderdome. So uh, I, I'm really, really thankful and honored to be here tonight. Uh, it's really wonderful to have all of you here to come out and support this. And I uh, really, really appreciate uh, everyone that's here. Thank you. Mr. Santa Barbara, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Crandell. Larry played three years at Syracuse. And you could take all the basketball stats, the numbers, everything he did there. I, I think they pale in comparison to this next one. One estimate puts his work as an MC, as a community leader, a contributor in this community. One estimate puts the amount of money that Larry Crandell has raised for charity at more than $200 million. <laughs> His contributions to Hoops in Santa Barbara was mostly as an MC auctioneer, fundraiser, and community supporter. He supported all of the local programs at college and high school levels. The gym at the Page Youth Center is named after our inductee, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Crandell. If I had any class, I'd sit down without saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> Can I try that? <laughs> but I would like to tell you that uh, I had a wonderful experience in the war and getting the Purple Heart and some other decorations. And they released me early, so I got back and had a, uh, a year at UCSB in 44-45 while the war was still on in Europe. And, uh, and the coach uh, tried very hard to work with us, but most of the really good players were still busy fighting in, in Japan, Japanese. And finally I came up with a slogan that inspired the whole team. Um, they, uh, at the start of one of the games, they got the ball around to me. And I try to remember, make sure you shoot it strongly enough so that at least hits the rim. <laughs> so I put enough bump on it to clear the front of the rim, clear the back of the rim, and clear the entire backboard. <laughs> I it softly landed in the bleachers. Some mean person will Shut the window. <laughs> Him a bit. Uh, you talk about a giving person. Uh, gave a lot of opponents headaches, but he's also given a lot of kids uh, breaks and opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carrick DeHart. Uh, I think everyone here, just like everyone else, says it's pretty humbling to be on stage with all these great basketball players and all the great talented nominators. For me, We've had a chance to share with different friends. We have a, a chance to share the experiences. We've had a chance to do all these different things in front of you. So as you walk away and you look at all, the, all of us that we've done, I think you're, you're, you're a part of the basketball family in Santa Barbara, which is really exemplified by unconditional relationships. Uh, the things that we did was that we cared for each other beyond anything else. Ben, we were, we were exaggerating and talking about the story that uh, dad wanted, me to, wanted you to stay away from me so I came here because I was going to go to Kansas. But the truth of the matter is I had had different relationships. I wore Don's uniform, his jersey in high school. I was number 35. I met Eric Burkhart when I was a junior in high school at Memorial Gym when I used to go and train all the time. He was a law student at Pepperdine.
I met B. Shaw when I first started playing basketball and went up to Northern California with Bruce Pearl. You remember that? And was getting ready to play at the Boston shootout. So all these things aren't coincidental. And today, when you look around, just make sure you know someone, you remember someone, and you remember you're part of our family. I've enjoyed immensely being a part of the Santa Barbara family. I hold it very dear to my heart. It means the most to me. I love you, and thank you for having me up here on stage. Good job well done. Ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee is uh, also one of the greatest who ever played the great game of basketball, sitting directly to my left, Mr. Jamal Wilkes. And to be inducted into the Court of Champions with uh, all these wonderful people on the dais, these luminaries, uh, basketball champions, and community leaders. Uh, thank you for your support of this event and coming out, and I hope you will continue to support this event. Uh, in particular, uh, I'm real privileged, uh, Cedric uh, Carrick was talking about unconditional relationships, uh, to be inducted with uh, Coach uh, Trigero, uh, Santa Barbara High School, uh, this guy here, Don Ford, uh, Vic Bartolome, and Holly Emerson Ford. I just have to get this out the way. Go Dons. <laughs> In addition, uh, Larry Crandell, who has meant so much to the community of Santa Barbara and the Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable, it's a real highlight to be inducted uh, with you and with Sal Rodriguez, the fine work you do with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Uh, it's an honor to be inducted with you. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge people that have uh, impacted me beyond Santa Barbara later on. Coach Cunningham, of course. Uh, it's always a treat to see you, Coach. And, uh, um, and uh, my friend and mentor, Billy Birdka. Uh, and uh, Coach Holland, it's great to see you. Uh, and I know he's not being inducted tonight, but uh, Jerry West, it's an honor to be on the same dais with you. Thank you so much. Basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gary Coulson. Coach George Raveling came to me and wanted me to speak to Michael Jordan's camp. Uh, I've been doing a lot of clinics on shooting and I volunteered to do it. I got to the gym that night. There were 850 kids there. It was about 9 o'clock at night. And I was in the center court and they were all around me and they were wired. I knew I had to get them early, okay? So I said this, I have named, I'm gonna to name to you five of the greatest basketball players that I personally have seen. You think about it to yourself. I have seen five, and I'm gonna name them right now. Of course, I started out with Michael Jordan, they went crazy. I said, Kobe Bryant. And of course, I had to name my guy, Jerry West. I mean, one of the all-time great. His son, Ryan's here. Uh, he's meant so much to me. And in the middle, in the middle, the big guy, Wilt Chamberlain. I turned and walked away. This little 12-year-old kid said, Coach, Coach, who's the fifth one? I got down in his face and I said, You're looking at him. <laughs> Uh, where's Kurt Pickering? Kurt, you are the salt of the earth. I'm telling you, I've, I've grown so admire you. In closing, I want to uh, say thank you to my wife, Mary Catherine, here. Um, the way I met her, I was in a uh, coffee shop in Berkeley with a bunch of coaches, and she walked in. And I said, hold it, guys. Call off the dogs. The hunt's over. <laughs> On this next one, I, I don't need a script. Um, uh, Mr. Jerry West put it best uh, when he spoke of Bill Bertka. 
and I've had the pleasure of knowing Bill for a number of years. Uh, Bill has been a great supporter of mine. He has been a, a wonderful friend. Um, Bill has championship rings for every finger that God gave him. Uh, just completed his 33rd straight year with the Los Angeles Lakers. Bill is the only coach in the history of the NBA to coach Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Shaquille O'Neal. And he is the only coach as an assistant in the history of the National Basketball Association to coach under seven different head coaches with the same organization. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Bertka. Congratulations to everybody up here at the head table for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Basketball's been my life, my blood. Basketball has been the architect of not only my life, but the architect of everybody at the head table up here. It's been the factor in your lives. It's giving you your livelihood, a bouncing ball, and a basket. But what a wonderful game. And I owe everything. I, I am the luckiest person in the world because of basketball. When I was a kid in the YMCA, when I was eight years old, I said, you're going to be a coach someday. That was my ambition. I'm not a scientist. I'm not brilliant. I'm not a, a, ma a real estate magnet or anything like that. I'm just a basketball guy. And basketball has really been good to me. And as I said, I live in Santa Barbara. How lucky can you be? I work for the Los Angeles Lakers, Dr. Jerry Buss, and people like Jerry West. How lucky can you be? I'm forever grateful what basketball has done for me and my life and living here in Santa Barbara. My wife, my wife said to me, you have a speech prepared, and I said no. And I, I missed the thing that I was going to do, and I'm going to do it because she should be standing up here with me. We've been married 58 years. I want to tell you something about Solve. Stand up, Solve. <laughs> and from the, <clears throat> from the standpoint of basketball, here is a quick story for you. For 30 years, stand up, Solve, please. <laughs> For approximately 30 years, she, ran, she is the only woman in the world that ran a scouting service. She recruited young scouts or young coaches. She, ha she had people scouting for her by the name of Krzyzewski, Hubie Brown, Mike Fratello, uh, who, who th these people know quite well. And they're all established coaches today. Roy Williams, the coach of North Carolina, he scouted. I can't tell you how many people across the nation got their start in coaching, scouting for Bertka Views. She holds a very distinguished uh, position in life from that. And I congratulate you, and you've been a wonderful wife for 58 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Ford. As you look across the tables here, and I'm going to talk a little bit, I think, about some of the, the paths I really have crossed with some of these people here at the table. Start with Jack Tregero, of course, my high school coach, and Jamal and I sitting here reminiscing. And I think maybe Jack helped me most with discipline, because he loved to discipline you. And I know my mom sitting there at the front table loved the fact that he liked to discipline me, because... <laughs> As a high school kid, as a teenager, maybe a little bad-tempered, ill-mannered, less so uh, because of Jack. 30 years, probably at the boys' club. I mean, he touched a lot of players. Uh, it was important in their lives and really helped mold them. Coach Cunningham, I first saw Gary Cunningham my senior year of high school uh, because UCLA sent him to look at me to see if they'd be interested in recruiting me. There was a little buzz in the warm-up line. You know, hey, UCLA's in town. They're looking at you, Don. I went out and had the worst high school game of my career. <laughs> totally melted and folded under the pressure, and 
I watched Gary walk away at halftime. <laughs> but years later, when I was a gaucho, we went down to Poly Pavilion, and uh, he was the assistant coach there with John Wooden and David Myers, Marcus Johnson, Richard Washington, and we went down there, and I had a good game. And because of those other players, there was a ton of scouts, NBA scouts there, and Pete Newell being one of them, general manager of the Lakers. So I was not good enough for UCLA, but I had a good enough game at UCLA to get drafted as a junior by the Lakers. You know, there's a Laker contingency here, obviously, uh, tonight, but there's a UCLA contingency here as well, and I was hoping to see Bill Walton here tonight. Jeez. <laughs> Because Jamal played alongside him for four years, Gary coached him, and we know he loved Ben and adored his style of play as a coach. Sorry, Ben, no bill tonight. Once I was a Laker, I really got to know Gary because Jerry and he are very obviously best friends, good friends. So when he was coaching at Pepperdine, I would see him at a lot of our practices at the Fabulous Forum. And I knew they were great friends because they dressed alike. <laughs> now, Jerry's a great dresser. I made the mistake one time on the road making fun of a pair of shoes he had on. <laughs> Jerry West. And he said, Donnie, these shoes are more expensive than your entire wardrobe. <laughs> and Donnie, I don't mean the outfit you have on. I mean your entire wardrobe. <laughs> and he was right. You know, it's the late 70s, jeans and flannel shirts really weren't that expensive. So I knew that he was a great dresser. I knew he took it seriously. But I didn't know Colson did. And 82 games in a season, I saw 82 outfits of Jerry. And I started to see Colson wearing similar. So I made, I asked him about it at a practice and Colson opens up his jacket. And it says in the label, handcrafted for Jerry West. <laughs> and I know he won't open that jacket tonight. <laughs> and Jamal Wilkes, lucky, lucky, lucky for me to be able to play high school basketball with Jamal. He came up his senior year, my junior year, there was a rumor again around town, hey, Jamal Wilkes is coming to Santa Barbara High. We didn't believe it. We were afraid to believe it. Didn't believe it until I saw him first day of practice. And I knew it was true. And Jamal, you know him as a, as a Bruin. You know him as a warrior. You know him as a Laker. I know him as a Don. I mean, he was good at the other places. He was great at Santa Barbara High School. So... And he was an inspiration to me, honestly. I didn't expect to be a Jamal, but I wanted to be as good as I could be because of Jamal. Now he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, you do not get better than that. And we got to play alongside him. I see Mike Macy. Mike, Jamal, and I started together at Santa Barbara High. I can't think of a lot of high school teammates that went on and were teammates in the pros. I'm sure it's happened but there's not a lot of them, and we did it. There was not a question that Jamal was gonna make it. The question was, would I make it? And I think a, a bit, a, a part of the inspiration that Jamal gave me really did help me make it. Um, yeah. When you all think of Jamal, you're gonna think of him wearing purple and gold, the Lakers. I will always remember him wearing olive and gold. Santa Barbara High. <laughs> I'll end this now thanking Jerry West. Not for coming tonight, <laughs> but for trading me to Cleveland. <laughs> and I thank you as a fan, because I grew up, I was born here. My mom was born here. I was always a Laker fan. Transistor radio, earplugs, listening to Chick Hearn, the exploits of Jerry, Gail Goodrich, Will Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor. I mean, I loved being a fan of the Lakers. And then to be drafted by him, awesome. Playing for him for five years, great. 
once I retired or got or was told I was retiring <laughs> I became a fan again of the Lakers so I thank Jerry for sending me off to Cleveland because in return they got James Worthy <laughs> that's trade <laughs> and Brian you want to be successful get yourself a trade like that I heard earlier that Gary Colson lost a ring. Jerry, Jerry West, I never got a ring. And I think I kind of earned a ring in that trade. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a real ring, it could be a knockoff. But as good as Magic was, and I played his first year, 60 games, till I was traded. As good as Magic was with Jamal, with Kareem, with Byron, they became fantastic with James Worthy. As a fan, I thank you, Jerry. And Kurt, I echo everybody here tonight. Uh, I first met Kurt, by the way, when he brought the Santa Barbara Islanders to town. He was a general manager, I was the assistant coach. Uh, he's been an NBA scout. He's been the general manager, he's, he's coached professionally. And uh, now he's a bit of a historian locally, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations to all these great inductees, but uh, my, my great friend Mike Klan, KEYT Sports Director. It's been a wonderful trip down memory lane for myself and probably everybody in this uh, audience. Just a wonderful night, and we're going to bring up uh, Kurt Pickering up here and uh, say a few words, and him and Eric are really responsible for this night. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, I would, John Moore stole a few of my minutes, so I'm going to talk real short here. It's going to be thank yous. I want to thank Tim Tremblay, Nick Zwick, Montecito Wynn for supporting this event. Our selection committee, uh, a great staff that has really helped me get through this. You know, it, it's, it's been a, a, a real journey, a, a short and hard journey, but it's been great. Uh, we had a senior basketball game last night. We had uh, referees Jamie, Dave, and Haywood and I want to thank them. I want to thank the Laguna Blanca kids that are here. They are part of the future. I'd like to thank Kathy with Fest Parker Resort, Jerry Fall, and Mike Klan. Let's give them a hand. They, the two hardest workers in this town. I want to thank the godfather of Santa Barbara basketball, Bill Burka. It's the reason I've lived here 25 years, right here, along with, with Selvig and the, uh, the Burke of Views. And I want to say a special thanks to Jerry West. You, I really appreciate you being here. I want everybody to know that this little guy right here, his name is West Figgins. He lives here. His dad's Randy. He's named after Jerry West. So <laughs> let's hope you're the next Jerry West on, on the court, all right? Go shake his hand. And last, I just want to thank you inductees for your achievements, your love of the game, and most importantly, how you've given back to this community. And, it, and as Carrick said, it's about relationships, and we want to continue this. We have so many wonderful people in this community that have, in the game of basketball, have contributed so much. And that's why the truth is, that beautiful little girl that sang tonight, West here, we got Laguna kids here. That's our future. And, you know, I want to continue to see basketball grow. Because look at the, the amazing people here that have influenced the game and this community. Thank you all.